Hi, it's Katrina. There are some crazy structures that have been around practically since the dawn of time. These things were made to last, even though most of the time we don't even know what they mean. Let's take a look at some of the mysteries and secrets concealed within the megalithic structures of our ancient past. Quirigua. The site of Quirigua in eastern Guatemala is home to strange zoomorphic carvings that have baffled scientists for years. Quirigua is not very well known to most people. Have you heard of it before? Maybe since you watched this channel. If you haven't, it's a small site covering barely more than a square mile. Yet between 200 and 900 AD, this small town was on an important trading route for the Maya Empire. It started as a town and by the 6th century had exploded into a religious ceremonial center. Its population boomed up until around 900, when suddenly Quirigua collapsed along with the rest of the Maya civilization. The site is popular for its enormous megalithic carvings of weird zoological creatures. Scattered all across the site are massive blocks that scientists have compared to three-dimensional books. Almost every square inch of the monuments is carved. Some of them weigh 20 tons, with each tiny portion of stone ornately engraved. The rocks demonstrate the amazing craftsmanship of the Maya, while alluding to the mysteries of their beliefs. The four biggest megaliths here were carved in 780 AD. Researchers can't say for sure what the weird animals and alien-like humanoids depict, though they do have their suspicions. It's believed the four gigantic monuments are linked to the Maya creation myth. The Maya were telling their version of how the universe was created through images of jaguars, snakes, serpents, crocodiles, you name it. Animals melded together to symbolize the sky being born, the stones of the world being placed, and the divine throne of the Maya's first human ruler. The truth of the Maya's lost world is convoluted in the hodgepodge of ancient symbolism. We just have to try to figure it out. Ishino Hoden One of the most bewildering monuments in all of Japan is a huge stone structure rising 20 feet off the ground. It weighs over 500 tons, and nobody knows where it came from. The amazing construct is positioned in such a way that the block of stone appears like it's floating above a small pond. The name of this monument is Ishi no Hoden, and it can be found within the ancient city of Takasago. Locals believe it to be the work of a pair of gods. The gods tried to build a castle on the side of Hodenyama Mountain in a single night, but when they were interrupted by another god, they left the castle unfinished. The only thing that remains today is this giant stone. What this stone really is, nobody knows. For all the experts know, maybe it was built by gods. Ishino Hoden is an unsolved puzzle in Japanese history. It happens to be situated only a few miles from Nara, the ancient capital of Japan. Experts have guessed it may have been made by the Jomon, who lived on the island during prehistoric times. The Jomon thrived in Japan from 14,000 until 200 BC. It's also located not far from another humongous megalith that you may have heard of before, Masuda no Iwafune. Both stone monuments are humongous, with nobody knowing who built them, when they were formed, or what their main purpose was. As a side note, myth and legend are still very much alive in Japan. During the COVID panini, Ishi no Hoden became a major attraction. While most people were trying not to leave the house, many were flocking to the monument in the belief that it could grant them luck and keep them safe from sickness. And now for number 7, but first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a big thank you to Dracus Dragonstar and Blade Daddy for supporting this channel. It's an honor to be at the top of your list and we wouldn't be here without you guys. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos about ancient secrets and mysteries. Cusco's Temple of the Sun over 500 years ago, the city of Cusco was the epic capital of the Inca Empire. This was one of the greatest cities in South America. They had unprecedented wealth, and so much gold, the city practically glowed in the sunlight. These days, Cusco is still alive. It's a bustling city with modern amenities and pieces of Inca history. One of the most astounding Inca buildings that still stands is Coricancha, the Temple of the Sun. Coricancha is at the center of Cusco, in the city's beating heart. Its name translates to Golden Temple. For the Inca, the temple was a sacred place where a person could offer praise and worship to Inti, 
god of the sun. It would have been one of the most important buildings in the city, like a Christian church in any medieval European town. Only Coricancha was no mere temple. It was built in perfect alignment with the motions of planets and interstellar objects. During the solstice, a direct beam of sunlight enters the windows and turns the temple into a glowing disco ball. The Golden Temple is evidence that the Inca had tremendous insight into the movements of celestial bodies. Or, in simpler terms, they were astrological geniuses. It's believed the temple was built around the year 1200. It isn't anymore, but the temple was once completely covered in gold. It would have had 700 gold sheets plastered to the walls, making it shine the very color of the sun. Then there were the decorations. There would have been images of all the Inca gods, from Kila of the Moon to Ilapa of the Rainbow. The garden would have had life-sized golden statues of alpacas and corn. It would have been an unimaginably beautiful place to witness with your own eyes. The Spanish certainly thought so. In the early 16th century, the Spanish beheld the wealth of Coricancha for themselves. They ransacked it, stealing all the gold and killing King Atahualpa, the last ruler of the Inca Empire. Montezuma Castle in central Arizona stands one of the most amazing ancient structures in the world. Montezuma Castle in the Verde Valley is believed to have been made by the Aztec. How is there an Aztec ruin in the United States of America? Well, it's a complicated story with multiple potential answers. Montezuma Castle might not actually have anything to do with the Aztec. Scholars are torn on the subject. The five-story tall palace carved into the side of a limestone cliff was either the home of Emperor Montezuma or a house built by bean farmers. Early European settlers in Arizona were the ones who started telling stories about Montezuma Castle being built by the Aztec. These days, mainstream scientists don't think the Aztec ever stepped foot in Arizona. It's a contentious topic because there is no way to prove that the Aztec never ventured into the region and tried to build things. At the same time, there is evidence of a Native American group known as the Sinagua who lived in the castle. The Sinagua were both hunter-gatherers and farmers. They grew corn, squash, and beans. Nobody knows where they came from or where they went, but they definitely spent some time in the Verde Valley. Artifacts belonging to the group have been found at Montezuma Castle. So many strange artifacts have been found inside the ruins that archaeologists believe the castle functioned as a commercial center. The Sinagua likely traded with people from very far away, potentially as far away as the Maya Empire. However, they packed up and left by 1425, never to return. Montezuma Castle was built 350 years earlier, give or take a decade, around 1100 AD. Whoever built the thing did so halfway up a sheer 150-foot cliff. It's amazing the ruins still stand, considering it looks like someone tacked the castle to the side of the wall. Before I move on, it's important to know that a huge amount of this site was looted in the 1800s. Curious settlers knew about the ruins, and many people came to take whatever wasn't nailed down. Maybe there were Aztec treasures here, but they were pilfered prior to the 20th century. The Altar of Monte Dacodi The Altar of Monte Dacodi is a prehistoric marvel in Spain. It's hugely mysterious because it looks kind of like an altar, a little like a pyramid and sort of like a ziggurat. Archaeological evidence proves construction started around 4000 BC at the hands of hunter-gatherers. Then it was abandoned a thousand years later, forgotten for 200 years, and construction began anew. So many ancient people have been connected to this site that experts can't agree on who should be associated with it. The Copper Age Sardinia culture known as Abeal Zuofili Josa showed up around 3000 BC. They made the mysterious structure even bigger, adding a second level and raising the pyramid to 30 feet in height. It's likely they used the structure for sacrificing sheep and other swine. The altar of Monte Dacori has also been associated with the Beaker culture and the Neuragic culture. It was likely abandoned around 1800, at which point it fell into neglect. The altar wasn't excavated until the 1950s. What makes it so exciting is that the altar of Monte Dacori is 6,000 years old and still standing. It was never blown up during war, and it's not in the best of shape, but it's still going strong. 
You can physically climb one of Europe's only pyramids, where prehistoric people worshipped strange gods and committed blood sacrifices. Lost in the Jungle An incredible discovery like never before has been made in the jungle of Guatemala. Laser scans have revealed 60,000 structures hidden in the jungle. These are structures that have never been seen before by modern human eyes. Scientists have always known the Maya Empire was big, but they hadn't imagined it was this big. Archaeologists have identified highways, houses, and farms. They have found pyramids and palaces and temples. It appears that 1,200 years ago, the jungles of Guatemala contained roughly 11 million people. But where do 11 million people go when they disappear? When the Maya Empire collapsed around 900 AD, all these newly found cities and highways were left deserted. What in the world happened to the people who lived here? Marcelo Canuto, the director of the Middle American Research Institute, released a statement about the discovery. He listed his highlights, tallying up over 500 square miles of viable farmland and approximately 61,480 structures. The team also found around 80 miles of causeways linking various urban centers like modern interstates. This was all found thanks to LiDAR technology, blasting the forest with lasers to create a map of the floor beneath. Now that the locations of these incredible monuments and cities have been identified, maybe scientists will finally figure out what happened to the Maya. Maybe they will finally understand how the Maya civilization crumbled before the Spanish showed up. Secrets of the Templars Over 700 years since the Knights Templar were erased from history, they remain one of the Middle Ages' greatest enigmas. There is one location in particular that has been the source of much Templar controversy. It's a small church in England. According to one researcher, over 10 Templar graves have been found on its hallowed grounds. This researcher is Mr. Edward Dias, a man who's been researching the connection between the Templars and St. Mary's Church in the West Midlands for two decades. In 2022, Edward and his colleagues claimed they identified three Templar graves in this small village. They didn't physically find them, but located evidence of them in historic surveys from the 19th century. In the 1820s, a Templar from about 800 years ago was supposedly found on the grounds. Then, in 2023, Dias announced the discovery of eight other Templar graves at the church. Unfortunately, Dias doesn't have any evidence. The amateur historian hasn't been able to confirm his discovery or cite his source. All he says is that his information comes from the oldest Templar society in Britain. He claims this society has kept records of Templar sites since they came to England in the 1200s. It's Edward's belief that St. Mary's Church was founded by the Templar Order and that fallen knights were buried on its grounds. Keep in mind that although Edward doesn't have the evidence he needs, that doesn't mean he's wrong. The church underwent major restorations between 1871 and 1874. Much of the original structure could have been destroyed. If Templar treasure was found during the work, chances are somebody took it. Drombeg Stone Circle 3,000 years ago during the Irish Bronze Age, the Drombeg Stone Circle was created. It's one of the best preserved and most mystical megaliths in all of Ireland. People are overwhelmingly familiar with Stonehenge in England and the other English stone circles, but Ireland has its fair share as well. The Drombeg Stone Circle has 13 of its enormous pillars still standing, each one over six feet tall. But much like the more popular stone circles in neighboring England, Drombeg's purpose is unknown. Archaeologists have found the ruins of ancient dwellings in the area, suggesting people lived around the megaliths. They've also uncovered phallic engravings and carvings of what look like eggs. The stone circle may have been connected to fertility, maybe to a fertility goddess, whose name history has forgotten. The Aqueduct of Valens The Aqueduct of Valens in Istanbul might not appear that mystical or mysterious. It's nothing but an old aqueduct after all. But its history is fascinating. The aqueduct was built over 1600 years ago and continued to remain an important feature until shockingly recently. This fantastic piece of Roman engineering is one of the few surviving examples of early Roman brilliance. 
Experts don't know exactly when the aqueduct was built or who was behind its construction. Some have argued it was Emperor Hadrian that ordered the giant water bridge created in the 2nd century AD. A more popular theory is that it was Valens in the 4th century AD. It's even possible that Roman Emperor Constantius II commissioned the aqueduct. Whatever the case, it was built as one of the longest and most successful aqueducts of early Europe. It brought water from about 100 miles away in the Kingdom of Thrace, moving the liquid across 155 miles of stone channels. This single enormous wall supplied the lifeblood for the early city of Constantinople. There were restorations in the 6th century following a brutal earthquake, then a siege in 626 saw the aqueduct significantly damaged. It was restored again a century later and then abandoned for nearly a thousand years. It's been said that during that time, the people of Constantinople relied on rainwater to survive. They were in such dire times that nobody bothered fixing the very structure that could bring them constant fresh water. It was not until the Ottoman Empire in 1453 that the aqueduct moved water once again. It remained in use until around the 18th century. There are still 86 arches remaining, with the surviving section of wall towering almost 100 feet in the air. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The Sundarbans. A team of archaeologists in India led by Dr. Fanikant Mishra have made a fascinating discovery in the Sundarbans. In case you don't know, this is a region of swampy mangrove forests in eastern India with many villages and tigers that swim. But the history of the region is quite complex. The first attempt to map the Sundarbans was in 1764, after the East India Company took the area under their control. There was no proper government here until the 1860s, and only because a forest department was established. There is very little known about the ancient history here, other than it supposedly stretches back to the 2nd century AD. New artifacts found by Mishra and his team, including terracotta beads, figurines, and human remains, have shown the Sundarbans actually go back 500 years earlier than previously thought, to at least the 3rd century BC. But there still isn't a lot of information on the people who lived in the Sundarbans thousands of years ago. The area is so primal and natural that it's been difficult to find any proper archaeological evidence. But the few things that have been found show that original estimates were wrong and that the Sundarbans have been around for a very long time. People have been living and fishing in the challenging environment coexisting with tigers here for thousands of years. Ancient Greek Settlement An extremely ancient site discovered near the Greek island of Crete is forcing scientists to rethink how they see ancient Greek societal history. This site is part of a Minoan settlement, in which scientists uncovered remains of shells that were used to produce purple dyes, as well as different types of jewelry. Archaeologists also discovered ancient fish tanks that had been used by the Minoans as part of a production facility for purple dye. During the late Minoan period, between 1800 and 1500 BC, almost 4,000 years ago, this purple dye was wildly expensive and a serious commodity. But the reason the discovery is changing history is that archaeologists also found copper vases, glass beads, and a wealth of gold jewelry, things made from bronze and silver, and things made of other precious stones. Archaeologists hadn't realized it before, but now it looks like the Minoans were masters of trade and accumulated a huge wealth by trading the dye they manufactured. It was all thanks to the purple that they got so rich and traveled so much. Ancient Chinese City the discovery of an ancient Chinese city may transform how we understand the origin of civilization in the region. Experts say the abandoned settlement recently uncovered in Zhengzhou dates back 5,300 years. What this means is that the ancient civilizations of China could be much older than previously thought. Ain't that always the way? Located in the Central Plains area near Henan, this area is extremely important in the development of civilization. The archaeological site covers an area of over 3 million square feet. The ruins themselves consist of villages from the Yangshao culture, which appeared on the scene over 7,000 years ago during the Neolithic age. But until now, they were believed to be quite primitive. Finding an actual city complete with a complex defensive system, an inner urban center, and advanced urban planning suggests that they were actually far more advanced than anyone knew. Thousands of artifacts have been uncovered so far, 
including a carved boar tusk in the shape of a silkworm. There is evidence that shows that silk was being produced in the region over 5,000 years ago. There is also evidence that they had advanced knowledge of astronomy, with patterns and objects representing constellations like the Big Dipper. The Amazon Jungle Culture Archaeologists found a mound in the Amazon jungle that stood as tall as a five-story building and stretched on for about two acres. The mound was part of an agricultural background with rice paddies and cow pastures. It was overgrown, there were people living nearby in the Peruvian city of Jaén, and it didn't appear to be anything important. It was just a mound. But when excavations began in 2010, archaeologist Quirino Oliveira suspected the mound was something more. The vegetation was cleared and the archaeologists immediately found pottery dating back 1,000 years. Oliveira then discovered proof of architecture on a massive scale. The mound contained walls beneath the soil, some of them once standing 9 feet tall. There was even a staircase. By 2016, the mound was mostly excavated to reveal what was probably once a thriving superstructure, occupied by an unknown society 3,000 years before today. Here's the crazy part. Nothing this large has ever been excavated in the Amazon. It's simply unthinkable, and yet it's flipping the script on what is possible in the greatest jungle on Earth. Archaeologists now know that there could very well have been populated cities much larger and more advanced than anyone could have previously thought, hidden throughout the dense and dark forests of South America. What secrets do you think are hidden in the Amazon jungle? Let me know in the comments below. Stones older than Stonehenge Archaeologists have found over 1,000 strange structures in Saudi Arabia that they believe are older than both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid of Giza. Known as mustatils, these rock formations made of piled up heaps of sandstone were found scattered over thousands of miles of desert. They were made between 8,500 and 4,800 years ago and contain the remains of animal bones that might have been religious offerings. People may have created these structures for ritual purposes in the Neolithic era, but we don't know exactly who these people were or what type of deities they believed in. They were probably designed as special places of isolation, according to Dr. Hugh Thomas, who worked on the investigation. The rocks create small cave-like structures only about 4 feet tall, even though they weigh over 1,100 pounds. They don't look like they were meant to keep anything in, like a fence, but to mark a specific space. But to be honest, nobody knows exactly what they were used for. They were first located in northwestern Saudi Arabia back in the 70s, and they didn't receive a whole lot of attention until just recently, when a team of researchers from the University of Western Australia decided to investigate. What they discovered is that these stones are far more complicated than anyone could have imagined. They had to use helicopters to fly over the region, as well as detailed ground excavations to find the total number of mustatils. It turned out there were many more than expected, with monuments being between 30 and 1,500 feet long. You can't really comprehend how large they are until you are actually there. They appear to be older than any other stone monument constructed by humans. Radiocarbon dating of a cattle skull found inside a hidden chamber inside a rock formation has revealed it to be around 7,000 years old. Such an old discovery will rewrite the way historians view the ancient people of the Middle East, who once lived in a sprawling wasteland of desert and grass, and practiced complex social rituals. Aztec Temple in a Maya City A new archaeological discovery is changing the way we understand how the ancient cultures of Mesoamerica connected with each other. It all happened when researchers discovered a hidden pyramid in the ancient Maya city of Tikal in northern Guatemala. Researchers found that the strange pyramid was part of a forgotten neighborhood made up of structures vastly different to any kind of structures found throughout the Maya kingdom. The structures were distinct, with features reminiscent of the old Aztec capital of Teotihuacan in what is now Mexico City. These two places are 800 miles apart, and many thought that the Aztec and the Maya didn't really communicate. What's even more fascinating is that a small replica of the square at Teotihuacan known as the Citadel was found in Tikal as well. According to archaeologist Stephen Houston from Brown University, the similarities in the details were stunning. What this new discovery means is that the Aztecs and the Maya definitely had more contact than anyone could have previously imagined. Considering the Aztecs basically had their own village in one of the greatest Maya cities, what some researchers have called a quasi-autonomous settlement, they must have had a pretty significant relationship. 
Thomas Garrison from the University of Texas, Austin, says that this newest discovery demonstrates how the ancient cities of the Americas were probably very similar to the cosmopolitan cities of today, with many different people living from many different backgrounds, and even with varying languages. So far, the research team has been able to estimate the construction of the Aztec settlement in Saitikal at being constructed roughly around 278 AD. This date is important because it was about 100 years before the king of Teotihuacan sent his general to kill the king of Tikal and take over the city. Ancient Skull Researchers have discovered yet another ancient skull in Ethiopia that dates back millions of years. Prior to this new discovery, the oldest ape-like human skull dated back 3.2 million years. The ape-like creature was named Lucy, and she was among the species that gave rise to the first early humans. Found in the same area of Ethiopia, this newly discovered skull is thousands of years older, dating back 3.8 million years. Considering the skull is so old, it's changing the way we see human evolution. This is so far the oldest fossil of any kind of early human ancestor found by scientists. This skull was discovered in two large pieces, which according to Stephanie Melillo, a paleoanthropologist from Germany, is unfathomable for a specimen so old. Professor Johann Hale Selassie, the researcher who discovered the skull, said he was very happy when he found it. I thought to myself, oh my goodness, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? And all of a sudden I was jumping up and down and that was when I realized that this was what I had dreamt. It was the scientist's dream come true. All we know so far is that the skull belonged to a male from a species known as Australopithecus anamensis the oldest known ancestral species of a group of creatures that came before our branch of the family tree known as Homo. Scientists are realizing that the evolutionary tree of humanity is significantly more complicated than what we know so far. The main reason for this is that the new skull and the skull of Lucy belong to two different branches of the same family tree, and scientists have figured out that they probably lived in Ethiopia at the same time for around 100,000 years before the older species went extinct. This shows that human evolution may not have been a slow trickle, but more of a violent and jerky uphill battle. Where did religion begin? Gobekli Tepe is a fascinating archaeological site in modern Turkey, specifically in the Anatolia region, which some researchers believe holds the very first place of worship ever made by humans. This ancient place goes back thousands of years. Built around 9000 BC, it lasted for 1000 years before the site was abandoned and buried around 8000 BC. For some unknown reason, humans that were hunter-gatherers came to this place and started a civilized society, developing a religion and using Gobekli Tepe as a ceremonial sacred space. This place may just be the first place in human history where humans began to honor a god. The structures are covered with carvings of mysterious symbols and wild animals, along with pillars with some human-like features. Hundreds of workers must have come great distances to help build this place. The more we learn about Gobekli Tepe, the more it changes our understanding of the ancient world. The stones once formed a huge open-air enclosure that would have been quite impressive. For a long time, researchers thought agriculture is what pulled humans together to begin society. But Gobekli Tepe is before agriculture and farming even started, meaning it may have been religion that helped form society, not agriculture. Temples and sanctuaries brought people together for worship. Those people would have needed food, and perhaps it was religion that brought civilization and agriculture, instead of the other way around. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The Saqqara Tombs New discoveries in Saqqara, Egypt over the past few months have been changing the way Egyptologists look at the country's ancient history. Located only 19 miles south of Cairo, the burial chambers found there have been significant. One of the most incredible finds was an inscription deep inside a burial shaft found last January. Archaeologists were able to decipher it and discovered that it said the temple they were excavating belonged to an ancient queen who had been unknown to historians up until now. This is Queen Nate, and she was the wife of King Teti, the first pharaoh to rule during the 6th dynasty. This was 4,300 years ago during a period known as Egypt's Old Kingdom. It was originally thought that King Teti only had two wives. The realization that he had a third wife who had her own temple is making historians go back and rethink what happened 4,000 years ago. 
According to Zahi Hawass, the most distinguished archaeologist in all of Egypt, Saqqara is literally rewriting history practically every day. Each building uncovered and each tomb excavated shows a new piece of history and rewrites a chapter of the story. Vikings in America A new discovery could rewrite the history of Vikings in North America. Using modern satellite technology and ancient Norse sagas, researchers have discovered what could potentially be the second Viking site in the New World. The location is a swampy peninsula that stretches from Newfoundland to the Gulf of St. Lawrence in Canada. It's an extremely remote part of the country called Point Rossi, and archaeologists were drawn there because they saw ground features that they believe were left over from the Vikings. And they were right! When they began their excavations, they quickly discovered a stone hearth likely used for working iron. This suggests the Vikings had lived in North America longer than previously thought. It also shows that there could be multiple Viking settlements across North America, especially in Canada. Until now, there has only been one confirmed Viking site anywhere in the New World. This, of course, is Lands Au Meadows, originally found in 1960 on the northern tip of Newfoundland. It was only a temporary settlement that was eventually abandoned after a couple of years. The truth is that most settlements will probably be quite similar. Archaeologist Douglas Bolander claims that there was a very brief colonization attempt by the Vikings that ultimately failed. But this newest discovery at Point Rosie could flip the script. Maybe Vikings did settle on North America for longer. But even if they did, what happened to them is still a mystery. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Grandmen here of Loch Machiaque. The Grand Menhir of Loch Machiaque is one of the largest freestanding stones to have been erected anywhere in Europe and is a part of a wider site of significance in the area. Based on my amazing French accent, you can probably guess it is located in France. It is believed to date back more than 6,500 years. The original stone is estimated to have weighed as much as 355 tons and stood taller than 65 feet. It would have towered above the surrounding landscape, but at some point in its history, the Grand Menhir fell, and it now lies on the ground, broken into four pieces. The site, which is thought to have been a lunar marker, was continually developed, and there are a number of other large stones nearby, including the La Table du Marchand, Passage Mound, and the Air Gras Tumulus, both of which were built about 1,000 years later. For some reason, ancient people just kept coming back. The pull of the standing stones is real. Quite what happened to this centerpiece stone remains unclear. Some suspect it was broken up so the stone could be used elsewhere, while the strongest evidence points to its destruction as a result of an earthquake in 1722. Trilithon of Baalbek, Lebanon In the ruins of the former city of Heliopolis, now in the Lebanese town of Baalbek, lie the largest cut stones ever known to have been created by human civilization. At the base of the ruins of the Jupiter Baal Temple are three stones, called the Trilithon, and each weighs more than 750 tons. Researchers remain divided as to who created these monsters. Some believe it was the Romans themselves while they built the Temple of Jupiter around 27 BC, but others emphatically believe the stones predate the founding of Heliopolis by Alexander the Great in 334 BC. They could be evidence that the site has been one of importance for far longer and the reason why the location was chosen for the city in the first place. Despite their size, the Trilithon stones aren't the largest on the site, as this record goes to the stone of the pregnant woman. This one still lies where it was cut from the ground, seemingly because whoever created it realized that they had no chance of moving it. This is hardly a surprise though, because it weighs an estimated 1,200 tons, which is the same as three Boeing 747s. Rujum El Hiri, Golan Heights the Golan Heights region on the border between Israel and Syria has a number of important archaeological sites, but one of the most interesting is Rujum El Hiri. The five concentric rings are made from piled up basalt rock. The central stack is about 15 feet tall, while the others are mounds of about 8 feet. Once at the center there was a tomb, but recent surveys have found that its contents have long been moved away. Nothing is known about the people who created this monument, although estimates place it as being around 5,000 years old. Mysterious, too, is its purpose. There are suggestions that it was a part of a burial ritual where the dead would be laid out to be eaten by birds, or perhaps the rings were used as a celestial calendar to assist with early astronomy. Either way, a great deal of effort was involved in building this monument, and it certainly had great significance to the people of the time. Gocheng Dolmens, South Korea 
Dolmens are tombs made from large stone slabs and can be found at megalithic sites around the world. The place with the most concentrated number of them, though, is South Korea, where there are three sites with a particularly large number of them. Built around 3 to 5,000 years ago, they are as good an example as you'll see anywhere. Gochang is the most important of the three and covers an area of more than 20 acres. Within this space are at least 440 dolmens of various types, along with a quarry from where the stones were cut. Usually consisting of two upright stones, that support a huge capstone, they would have been built above the bodies or remains of important figures and served as a long-lasting memorial to them. As such an important prehistoric site, all three dolmen groupings in South Korea are UNESCO World Heritage Sites to ensure that they are protected for many more years to come. The Karnak Stones, France the Karnak stones in the Brittany region of France are the largest collection of prehistoric hand-cut stones in the world. Large rows of megaliths cover the countryside, along with dolmens, burial mounds, and individual menhirs. In total, there are more than 3,000 structures. They would have been created over thousands of years, but the first date back to at least 4,500 BC. As with many monuments like these, it's not clear what their actual purpose was, and the wealth of different types across the region suggests they had multiple uses. Some are arranged in stone circles, perhaps as primitive calendars, while others are in rows and some look like grand mausoleums. Some of them line up perfectly with the motion of heavenly bodies, and there are signs that parts of the region were used as mass gathering points. With so many stones in one area, it's no surprise that many haven't survived or have been used by subsequent inhabitants in the construction of their own monuments or homes. Some believe it's quite possible that there may have been more than double the number that now stand today, which makes it by far the most significant region of megalithic structures found anywhere else. Ha Monga a Maui Tonga One of the more unusual megalithic structures can be found on the Pacific island of Tonga. The Ha Monga a Maui Historic Park is the site of the second capital city of the ancient Tui Tonga Empire and, according to stories passed on by word of mouth, was built there in the 10th century having relocated from the village of Toloa. The region gets its name from the Polynesian god Maui, and the most prominent feature is the trilithon structure. Known as the Haamonga a Maui, it's made from three coral limestone slabs, each of which weighs more than 20 tons and is about 20 feet long. According to legend, this monument was built around the year 1200 and is thought to have been a gateway to the royal compound. In support of this idea is another stone slab about 300 feet away, which served as the king's throne. The Taulas of Menorca, Spain The Balearic island of Menorca off the coast of Spain is a popular destination for tourists looking for sun, sea, and sand, but it's also home to 35 stone megaliths that are scattered throughout the island. Known locally as Taulas, which means table because the only parts that remain visible of these buried structures are the flat capstones, they look quite similar to the arrangements at other sites, such as Stonehenge. People have lived on the island for at least 4,000 years, and it's thought that it was some of the earliest settlers that were responsible for creating the Taulas. They all share the same basic features, being set in a horseshoe formation with a wall of surrounding stones. Again, quite what they were for remains unknown, and it's not clear who decided to bury them either. Archaeologists have found, though, that most of them remain intact, and have managed to uncover a number of them to show how the landscape would have looked many thousands of years ago. Most point in a southerly direction, and no structures like this have been found on any nearby islands, meaning that, for some reason, Menorca was seen as a special place. Calsoini Megalithic Observatory, Brazil about 10 miles from the municipality of Calsoini in Brazil is the largest megalithic site in the whole of South America. Known as the Calsoini Megalithic Observatory, researchers are constantly uncovering new details of what would have once been an iconic focal point for the local civilization. Made up of 127 granite megaliths, some of which are as much as 10 feet tall, it's estimated to be somewhere between 500 and 2,000 years old based on pottery fragments that were found nearby. Researchers say that it proves the existence of a complex culture in the region, which must have developed far earlier than previous evidence had suggested. The stones mark the winter solstice to such precision that the sun rises above one of them during December, and it's thought many of the other stones are aligned with astronomical objects to allow the people to monitor them and conduct religious rituals at the right time throughout the year. This site is understandably referred to as the Brazilian Stonehenge, and it makes you wonder what other monuments there are to be found in this archaeologically neglected region. Gobekli Tepe, Turkey 
At more than 11,000 years old, six miles from the ancient city of Urfa in Turkey is Gobekli Tepe, thought to be the world's first temple. Predating Stonehenge by 6,000 years, the people of the time hadn't yet developed pottery or metal tools, but managed to build this place with massive carved stones. The pillars are all arranged into circular features, with two large T-shaped pillars to the center and a ring of smaller stones facing towards them. The biggest ones are 16 feet tall and weigh as much as 10 tons, and many of them have images carved into them, such as foxes, lions, scorpions, and vultures. The circles are huge, in some cases measuring 65 feet across, but despite working on the site since the 60s, researchers say they have only just scratched the surface. Interestingly, there's no sign at all of anyone having actually lived here, which is why it's believed to have been the first religious site, attracting people from all around to worship their gods in this pristine location on the top of the hill. Adam's Calendar, South Africa Megalithic structures are undoubtedly old, but Adam's Calendar in South Africa is thought to be the oldest of them all, with some reports suggesting it could have been made around 75,000 years ago. It's one of an estimated 100,000 such structures in the hills around Pumalanga, but it is by far the most interesting. Known by locals as the birthplace of the sun, a number of astronomical alignments have been found with the arrangement of these stones. There are those that point to north, south, east, and west, and ones that line up with the path of the sun during equinoxes and solstices. Still to this day, it works as a calendar. The sun casts a shadow from the central monolith onto the stones next to it, some weigh as much as five tons, and we're all somehow transported here from far away. There's so much to still learn here, and it could hold the key to understanding far more about our distant ancestors. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Puma Punku in Western Bolivia.
asked about the so-called bottomless properties of the area's ponds. In 1992, one local man decided to put this myth to the test. He rallied members of the community together and they purchased a hydraulic pump. After 17 days of pumping, a series of hand-dug caves were revealed. Since this initial discovery, 30,000 square meters of man-made caverns totaling 36 grottos have been discovered. The elaborate caves were carved into siltstone and contained separate rooms, along with features such as bridges, gutters, and even intricate wall carvings. Pillars were carved throughout the caves to support the ceilings. While the most ornate of the caves has been open for tourism, there's a limit to how much information can be provided to curious guests about its origin. That's because even with up-to-date engineering and archaeological research techniques, experts have been unable to identify the ancient civilization responsible for creating these caverns. There's no known documentation regarding the origins of the caves, leaving one of history's biggest ancient excavation projects a near-complete mystery. This lack of record-keeping stands in stark contrast to the meticulous documentation ancient Chinese civilizations are known for. Additionally, no tools were left behind by the cave's builders. Who created these caves is not the only mystery. Scholars are also uncertain how, in the absence of modern technology, workers excavated one million cubic meters of rock, except perhaps with a lot of patience. To remove the dirt alone, it's estimated that 1,000 workers would have had to work 24-hour days for six years straight. Researchers are even more perplexed by the decision of the excavators to chisel away at the caves bit by bit, as evidenced by repeated parallel marks on the walls, rather than resorting to more efficient known methods at the time, including the use of picks and blunt objects. Amazingly, the caves have withstood the test of time. They're undamaged by seismic activity and contain no rubble, despite the area being prone to natural disasters and some walls measuring as thin as 50 centimeters. Masuda no Iwafune Nestled among the hills of the Nara prefecture of Kansai, Japan, is a village called Asuka, which has origins in the tumulus, or old mound period, between 250 and 552 AD. In addition to being known for its Buddhist temples and shrines, Asuka is also home to a collection of strange stone carvings. These monuments are of an unknown origin and don't fit with the Buddhist style of sculpture and construction that otherwise dominates the area. Masuda no Iwafune is the largest of these bizarre stone structures. Its name is rumored to mean Rock Ship of Masuda, and it sits atop a steep hill. The solid granite rock weighs some 800 tons, measures 36 by 26 feet, and is 15 feet high. There are two square meter holes carved into the mound which continue through to the ground. Much like several of the other bizarre structures on today's list, scholars struggle to understand both the how and why behind the creation of this colossal mound. Experts have determined that the linear protrusion at the top of the monument runs parallel to the top of the hill it sits on. On a day known as Spring Doyu Entry, which was an extremely important day in the world of ancient Japanese agriculture that marked the beginning of the farming season, the linear protrusion atop the monument also aligns with the sun. The Stone Head of Guatemala Sometimes the discovery of ancient artifacts or ruins causes even the most educated scholars to question history as we know it. In 1987, a notary, lawyer, and doctor of philosophy named Dr. Rafael Padilla received a photograph of a unique monolith that was supposedly located somewhere in the jungles of Guatemala. The picture, which depicted a large head carved out of stone, was reportedly taken in 1950 by the owner of the property it was located on. At the time, because the property owner had recently died, Padilla was unable to obtain information regarding the exact location of the mysterious structure. The photograph of the stone head elicited controversy not only due to the inability to locate it, but because it possessed distinctly Caucasian features, such as thin lips and a long nose. In other words, traits that were uncharacteristic of all known pre-Hispanic inhabitants of the Americas. Unsatisfied with the limited available information about the giant face, David Hatcher Childress, a well-known author and explorer, tracked down Dr. Padilla. According to Padilla, he had in fact gotten in touch with the property's owners, who told him precisely where the structure was located. When Padilla reached the site, the face had been obliterated by anti-government rebels and was disfigured so badly it was no longer recognizable. The monument has since been largely forgotten. Georgia Guidestones Nicknamed the American Stonehenge, it has surprisingly modern origins. In 1979, a man wishing to conceal his identity sought the services of Elberton Granite Finishing Company in Elberton, Georgia, for the completion of a monument containing instructions for the re-establishment of society. 
perhaps in the aftermath of an apocalyptic event. The ten guidelines were to be engraved in eight languages – English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. A short message would grace the top of the monument in four ancient languages – Babylonian cuneiform, Classical Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Per the terms of the legal contract regarding the construction of the monument, all plans for it were to be destroyed upon its completion. The strange man, who went by the pseudonym R.C. Christian and possessed seemingly limitless funds for the project, insisted on all information about his identity being strictly withheld from the public. Included among the ten guidelines, which are engraved on six granite slabs, are rules such as balance personal rights with social duties, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason, and be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature. According to an instructional tablet at the site, there's a time capsule buried under the monument, but whether it truly exists is unknown, and no information about its date of burial is provided. When it comes to the commissioners of the Guidestones, conspiracy theories abound. Rumors of the New World Order or Satanists being responsible for the monument have led to extensive vandalism. To date, all that is known about the anonymous sponsors of the monument is that they are, according to the monument itself, a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. Xbox-shaped Qin Dynasty Tomb In early January of this year, Twitter user Xbao, who loves the Xbox as you may have guessed, announced the alleged discovery of a Qin Dynasty tomb bearing a striking resemblance to the logo of the Microsoft Xbox video game console. The photo quickly gained the attention of gaming enthusiasts, and the official Xbox Twitter account even posted a reply, jokingly stating, Ah yes, that's the Xbox 220 BC. Very little additional information can be found about the tomb, and there's a conspicuous absence of photos and video footage of it on the internet. Could the image have been faked? While that's a possibility, seemingly authentic video footage of the tomb appeared on the Chinese social website Weibo, and it seems to have been taken from CCTV10, a legitimate Chinese television network. According to the fact-checking website hoaxerfact.com, a Qin Dynasty-era tomb was, in fact, recently discovered in China. And while the tomb has an X-shaped feature that looks a lot like the Xbox logo, this is obviously simply a coincidence. Perhaps the Chinese have uncovered something spectacular, but are just not ready to share it with the world yet. Thanks for watching! Which structure would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time! Bye!